<laughs> there we go. So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 4th of October already. Ah, um, <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody. Um, I, I'm very excited about tonight because I, I'll, I'll, I'll start with a brief story and then we'll get I sent Roland, just yesterday, I sent Roland a note saying, hey, what's up with your kids? What happened to them? They were they were annotating and then they fell off and maybe you were doing state code. I don't know what happened, right? I just wanted to connect again. And and like, as soon as I sent my email, I checked your students' work and they had done this amazing work with the thinking partners. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to get her to come talk to us on TTT. And so... Busy, hardworking teachers. It's it's really late at night. I appreciate the fact that you're doing this for us, Roland. Um, but let's um, we'll come around and ask you to do uh, introductions at the end. We'll start with Chris and kind of go around quick introductions and what you're thinking about AI very briefly. Um, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media production and photography at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, I'm thinking about right now, we just went through a sequence using um, some AI tools to help my students with their college application admission essays. And now um, we're actually sitting down and talking as humans uh, with each other because they feel like their their essays are in pretty good shape now so they can sit down and talk about something substantial is what I'm hearing from them. David, thanks. Chris. Um, my name is David Cole. I'm in Berkeley, California. I've worked for the Writing Project on technology and literacy projects over the years, and uh, I'm thrilled to be back in this group that Paul's hosting week to week. Just as a point of reference, I did a lot of work with paper circuitry and literacy uh, materials, and I'm quite interested in AI uh, and what that's meaning for instruction and the way that people are getting engaged. And I just came from a PD full of teachers with paper circuitry and narrative, and now it's excited to hear how AI is going. So um, it's, it's, it's a full day of listening to teachers being busy. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Oh, cool. Thank you. Jessica, our soccer mom. <laughs> I am oh, a soccer that, that, mom. I'm in my car. I think, is it echoing? No, you're good, no, when, you're you good when you talk. Okay. I think I might've figured out that okay. my car's okay. Bluetooth was connected. So that might've yep. been... Yep. Uh, let's blame, let's blame the car. The car. It's the like soccer that. problem. So my my twin boys are soccer players, and so is my daughter. And um, so they're at soccer, and I'm in the car doing this, and I'm so happy to be doing this. Um, I'm also, besides a soccer mom, a writing researcher and director of National Writing Project site here at ASU in Tempe, Arizona. And I'm really interested in the teaching of secondary writing and um, working with ethnically and linguistically diverse students to demystify like uh, high stakes genres like the college admission essay, any kind of writing really for real world purposes. And I've been, my favorite thing each week has been joining this group. I love it. And I love hearing from mm -hmm. teachers and seeing how AI can help students and teachers as a thinking partner. Cool, 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 cool. Kylie. Hi, everybody. Um, I am a first year PhD student also at Arizona State University um, with Dr. Early. Um, um, this is still, AI is fairly new to me. I remember I'm, I'm a third year teacher now. And so I remember being a teacher in the height of chat GTP coming out um, and thinking, um, all it's going to lead is to students cheating and then entering the program. And it kind of started shaping the way that I think about um, the way that I do things in the classroom. And now everything is, I could, I could research that and I could maybe, I could, I could change the face of education. And this was one of the things that kind of came up recently and uh, really piqued my interest. And so I'm interested in learning more about AI and potentially trying to conduct some research in how it can help students through um, kind of the invention and the brainstorming process. And then also in the revision process of writing. So still fairly new in it. And I'm excited to keep learning and see what I can do. Cool. cool. So is it true that um, research that PhD students all added AI to their thesis um, in, in the past six months? I just, yeah. <laughs> I, Jessica, I think, you're, 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 yeah, yeah. Every, every, 
almost all the doctoral students I've talked to are, that's what they want to study now. It's interesting too, last year, my department, we had funding to hire and professors want to hire people who've done research in AI. And I was like, you can't put a call out when AI just, <laughs> no one's done the research yet. You can't hire someone yet. <laughs> too new. Mm -hmm. But in a few years, Kylie, you'll be we'll be able to hire people like you. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. That's that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. Hi, Bob. Quick introduction. You were next. Is he on? Oh, your microphone's not on yet. Somehow, uh, you'll work on that. Um, and Roland, we'll we'll go to you, and you will. Um, Introduce yourself, please. You got to unmute, Roland. You're muted. Okay, now, good. There it is. Um, okay. Roland Haywood. Uh, this is my 20th year with the Philadelphia School District. I'm also with the Philadelphia Writing Project. And Paul had been patiently introducing me to AI and Como space, but I've been scared because, you know, our school blocks everything AI. So I said to him, you know, this was three years ago, Paul, or four years ago. And I it said, just seems okay, like that. It wasn't there. <laughs> get there. <laughs> and this year I, I did. And uh, I'm very happy with it. And he, you know, Paul helped me in a way that it was just slowly introducing the, uh, the idea to my students. He didn't put AI in the discussions until the third post, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. And so that really helped a lot. So tell us more about what you're reading. And... We're reading The House on Mango Street by Cisneros. And so they're and these vignettes. are ninth graders, yes? Yeah. Yes, okay. yeah. they're ninth graders. And this is only the second month of school, right? Second month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five weeks. Five weeks of school. And so they're still scared. They're still shy. And, you know, ninth graders. So I'm slowly, that, and I introduce, we usually, um, we don't read the book in class. So I asked Paul if they, we could use Cisneros, the first, um, maybe first few vignettes. Uh, and then he, what did we do for, oh, the annotations. We did the annotations first. And um, the, the second one, um, we so, did. So we, we, divide, we divided the book into five, three parts in the end. And in the first part, they annotated and responded to each other. Yep, go ahead. Hi, Christina, welcome. Thank you. So, yeah, so well, they, and ahead. then the second, the second part, we changed it instead of, uh, they responded to each other. So the second part, the second part of the book, we, I asked them to just focus on figurative language. And so each, each time I introduce uh, the now comment, it's a different focus. And the third one, that's when we um, played with AI. Oh, cool. Um, so thoughts, questions already? Um, anybody want to ask uh, just to get started here? We're going to show you some of this and let you look at it. But any thoughts or questions getting started? Anything, Anything more you, more want, to you want to say about, about your, your students? But, oh, sorry, Jessica, go ahead. You, you. Oh, I just was, if Christina wanted to introduce herself. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Christina. You have a lot Hi. of background, but go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. There's a little noise here, um, but I'm Christina Cantrell from the National Writing Project and excited to be here. I went to Girls High School, which is a block away from Central High School. So. Cool, cool. Roland, this is your second year at Central, is that correct? Yes, my second year at Central. Okay. And we read this last year without now comment. We just mm -hmm. did, you know, the students, and it's it has a different effect mm -hmm. somehow because um, they're there's at first they were scared of of the online thing because it's always rerouting us. It's uh, the school 
um, and then um, you know we and then they got the you know they in, they're enjoying it now because of we we introduced AI on the third uh, session. Cool. All right, so I did want to spend some time getting some context here, not just jumping right to the AI. Um, and it is true that, um, Roland, you did ease into it as well. And I think that's a, mm -hmm. an interesting thing to, to, to point out. Um, mm -hmm. But we do want to get to look at some of the stuff. Um, so what I want to propose, I, I don't have a real good plan here, but I'm going to share my screen, OK? Mm -hmm. And um, there are five tables around each, ta each ta in this area. Each table represents one of Roland's classes. And I didn't ask you for permission to do this, Roland, but it's I'll okay. ask now. Um, so um, there are some, there are, if you're in the testing group, you can go in and see the students work. Um, but we've blocked all their last names and everything. So that's, that's cool. So I'm going to show some of that. A any class that you prefer me to show, or what do you think? For which one? For the AI first period is good. Yeah, let's jump to the AI. Yeah. That was good. Paul, that was good. Paul yes. Yes. can you just remind yes. us um, before I mess up? Once yeah. when you share your screen, yeah. how do we get back and forth places? So, so the, the, yeah, well, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll turn it off. Turn it off then. So when so the, when a, a little a little a little thing a little comes thing up comes up just exactly. so so the screen comes up and you have total control of that you can move it around you can make it smaller you can make it bigger so right and then when you you can close it even and then you'll find it on a different tab you'll find us back here in Kumo space does that make some sense I hope so okay um, should be better at this than I am uh, and. Uh, Presenting this, but here we go. I think not. You don't want to see that. But let me go to period one. Yes. Am I sharing period one now? No, nope, I'm not. Harry, introduce yourself while I while I mess around here. Why is this um, hi, um, I'm from Delaware. Um, I'm a librarian. I think that's all I need to say. Yeah, I'm in the high school at Woodbridge High School. So, yeah, that's where we'll leave it. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, cool. we're all generously uh, is going to present on our official professional development day. So right now we have people from New York, New Jersey, West Virginia, Virginia, D.C., and Maryland and Delaware all. It jumped up from 34 people to 67 today. So that's good news. So that's it should nice. be, uh, we have administrators. Um, we have public school librarians. We have private and charter school um, librarians and parents. And Harry, the, the, the topic is is about how can librarians um, deal with AI? Is that the topic your, more or less? Yes, or? that's the your section of it. That, and that was one of the questions when we surveyed um, all the librarians that participated in last year's professional development. One of the biggest ones was they wanted to have something talking about how AI could be used in various levels in the high school. So, and, and you know, the libraries could utilize that. So that'll be kind of exciting. I'm, I'm, it's going to be good. So uh, I'm realizing something also, one more preface. Last week, Chris Sloan so, showed all the work he's doing, not all of it, a lot of the work he's doing on youth voices using templates. And I should have explained this and I forgot to. And there may be some whiplash here, because we're now in now comment dealing with thinking partners, AI thinking partners. Um, Troy Hicks said we should put the AI in there. Anyway, um, we're dealing with AI thinking partners, and um, and what what I do want to say is that the templates that we created in Youth Voices are very very similar to the the prompts that we use to create thinking partners on now comment. Not totally the same. There are some differences between the two architectures, but um, in this case, with Rowan's work with her students, it's all in now comment um, using thinking partners. Any questions about that pivot that we're doing here this week? Okay, Bob, are you okay? Were you able to talk? 
you look, you look like you can unmute and introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, there, I've got my there microphone you go. up. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob. I work at West Ed and <clears throat> eager to find ways to use AI to help my colleagues learn better. Cool, cool. Okay, so let me do. Let me go into presentation mode here um, for a second. This is a page. Um, each of Roland's student and Roland, please inter uh, interrupt me um, and correct me and make it clear. Um, but this is a page where we are collecting together excerpts of um, the vignettes. Um, as as you can see, uh, period one did what six hundred and thirty two comments. Uh, on the first nine vignettes. And that, that's fascinating and wonderful and worth looking at. Um, Want to kind of fast forward. And then, Roland, say it again. You, the second section, you had them look at figures of speech. Is that correct? Are you there, Roland? Yeah, you, figurative okay. language. Figurative language. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and then... Um, we put together some of the rest of this. And so I'm going to go to this one um, and open this. The third one. Yeah. Now, in between, did you do some Socratic conversation dialogue? Yeah. You said. So before yeah. this, we actually, I, I actually asked them to um, choose three characters and, uh, you know, give them character traits and go back to the book and uh, identify where are the character traits or the support, supporting text. And they, that's what they did. Um, and then the next day I saw in your post that um, the chanclas and giving traits to, um, mm -hmm. to Uncle Nacho. And I said, okay, let's go there and ask AI about traits of, um, of other people that you did not characterize. And they did, and they were happy with it because, you know, like I had a student who picked um, a character and she uh, put AI, the one with the counselor, the admission counselor. And, mm. <laughs> and I told them to ask the same question to two different partners. Mm. And it was interesting how the two differs because they said the counselor would answer differently than the, um, I forget what the other partner was. And there's also Kobe Bryant in another class it, where Kobe Bryant uh, answered the question using, you know, figurative language related to basketball. Now, you also asked them to say what they thought about it. Is that right? Yes, yes. So I asked them if what they thought of the answer and, you know, respond to the AI's answer. And right. there was, there's another student actually who said that, wow, Cisneros, is this you? You're right on, you know. <laughs> so say more about how, like, some hated, said, this is not answering my question. They got mad at AI, I think, a little bit. <laughs> I, what was it? What, this is, this we're is gonna not We're going to down and read some of these, but what was it like in the room? Yeah, good. And they were talking to each other. She didn't even answer my question. I said, and, and another student said, my goodness, does she have to have an essay to answer this question? <laughs> right. Fair enough. Now, we did not talk ahead of time. And we did, and 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 it may. It, I think it's really interesting. We're going to learn a lot from. I mean, your students um, hit up OpenAI four hundred times yesterday, right? Um, and so there's a lot of. They did. I didn't even know. I know. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of conversation in all of your classes with AI. These are AI responses. I want to slow down and maybe show how to, how it works a little bit. Is that probably fair to do? So, and and Roland, you you tell me. You had them pick a sentence or a paragraph, or how did you think about that? I just told them to ask a question. I did not give any other directions. And then we found out that you have to have a you have a choice whether it's a sentence, a document. So I said, you know, did you pick any? And she said, no, I just asked a question. 
I'm confused. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm confused. So I know House on Mango Street. So Roland, you had them ask a question about the chapter they read, the vignette. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any so question? I'll, so I'll slow I'll down and show, show that. Okay. Um, so let's say we're let's look at paragraph ten right here, right? Um, what we can do, we can either pick a sentence, and and you can see me highlighting it here. I am yes. Yes. Okay, good, good. So I can either choose a sentence or a paragraph. I'm going to choose a paragraph, and then instead of writing my comment and my full comment here, which they did in the first you know parts of the book, this time you ask them, Roland, tell me correctly, you ask them to pose a question here and then to choose a thinking partner. So a partner might be something like... Well, some of them... Yeah. Or yeah I, I explored it this way. On the top right of the answers, there's mm -hmm. that uh, AI... Yes, but it's up there too. Yeah. Yes, you can click that too, and it will it will allow you to ask a question from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we ask AI. We have some choices here, and I I don't think um, you see this pop up. Yes. But we're going to see some of these choices um, in a second. I'm going to use Fire Guru just as the example. And and how did you guide them to choose? Or I told you? them to experiment. So okay. I said, pick two, or you know, they have to ask two questions and two thinking partners. So and it has to be there's a range. Like for example, ask a sage and ask a teenager. So mm -hmm. we'll see the comparison of the answers. All right, and we will. We'll slow down and look at, at, at what these thinking partners are here in a second. And there are links in this room that will help with all that. But I'm just going to say, what do you think of this paragraph, right? That's more or less. Uh, your students ask more specific questions. Um, and, and I think, and I'll say this uh, right now, that I, I'm learning a little bit about, and I think we all are, about what they think AI should do, right? <laughs> And so that, that's part of the questions that they ask. And they got really disappointed when it didn't give them an answer, right? Um, so that I'm just noting some of that. Um, not everybody, but oh, some people. Just to finish this thought, there is one also that, that asked them to write in this box here um, to... Um, to say a little bit about themselves and then it makes some connection with them. Those ones are really interesting, I thought. Did you, how did you talk to them about this third box here? I um, didn't. Oh, okay. And, and which is yeah, so it's interesting to see some of your some of your students wrote some stuff about themselves and then got AI to make that connection between the mm -hmm. text. Saying too much here. Um, but I'm going to hit continue. Um, what else? Questions, thoughts, people, as this is spinning. I just like that you mentioned that you're um, getting reactions from the students of things that they expected AI to do and they're not doing. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. I think that's pretty cool. That's not anything even students would be expecting to, I don't know, and, or educators expecting to get back to them, but I think that is awesome. Yeah. And it really became a conversation in the classroom. Like um, there are, in my first period class, they were just so impressed in that it helped them think of a different perspective. You know, I wouldn't have thought of that. And many of them were really happy. And then some did not expect the answers, but they they just said, okay, I found another partner to, to give me the answer or to help me with the answer. And there's also um, a, a specific question like, um, what is the plot of this? And then AI did not answer, but gave uh, background information. I think it was a writing coach. 
Yeah, I noticed sometimes when your students said they didn't answer the question, I'm like, yeah, you know what? If you read that a little more carefully, you might find an answer mm -hmm. inside there, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but so this is how it works. We're kind of do, all over the place here, but let me just make this clear. So um, Bonnie Bentham, um, who teaches in Philadelphia, also um, is uh, working on uh, research for her PhD right now. Um, so it's not in the classroom right now, but in the spring, she and her students and I uh, put together this um, fire guru, which um, is somebody who speaks like this. Could somebody read this for us? I'm calling on you. Harry, do uh, you want to read this for us? Yeah, boy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, all right. So first thing first, you got to peep how the author's using language to paint this vivid picture. You feel me? Like, look at this right here. My feet swell big and heavy like plungers, but I drag them across the linoleum floor straight center where uncle wants to show off the new dance we learned. See how that image just popped in your head? That's what we call descriptive language, playboy. The author isn't ain't oh, the author ain't just telling you what's happening. They be painting the whole scene with words. You can feel the heaviness of this feet, and you can visualize that dance on the linoleum floor. Then there's this part right here. All night, the boy, who is a man, watches me dance. He watched me dance. Repetition and variations, folks. They're telling you about how time's going by and how that moment was so impactful. It stayed on her mind. She ain't no. She ain't just repeating herself because she forgot what she said. She emphasizing that point. Now look, I ain't gonna front and pretend you saw all this on your first pass. It's all good because reading ain't about catching every little thing the first time. Dig this. Go back and read that paragraph again, like you're watching an epic flick, and just let the words soak in. Don't just read it. Just don't read it. Experience it. It's like a gourmet meal, dog. You ain't mean <laughs> meant to gulp it down. You savor each flavorful bite. So when you dive back, last paragraph. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Is, is that good enough? <laughs> no, go do one more. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so when you dive back in, think about how this situation might have felt to you. Picture yourself at that party, feeling all self-conscious at first, then suddenly becoming the star of the show. Feel the pride in that moment and the admiration of those around you. That's what the author is trying to help you understand, using the magic of well-crafted words. Gotta appreciate how they'd be using language to create that personal connection with you and give you a whole new insight into somebody else's life. All right. Um, just want to uh, finish the demonstration. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Harry. <laughs> you didn't know you were going to be called on to be an actor. Um, you've done that. Uh, the, um, the, uh, so you can resubmit and get this, get another version, and students can compare. Roland, did they do any resubmitting? Do you know? No, we, they just started the conversation. Okay. So you hit start conversation. The other thing that is worth beginning to think about is that the what comes back from AI is, is, is in an edit screen, right? And students, and it says here, AI results to edit. They're encouraged to go ahead and edit it. So one of the responses to students say, that didn't answer my question, could be like, well, you know, when this goes up, it's going to be you and AI. Maybe you should go in and see if you could answer, you know, so correct it, make it, make it honest, make it clear, make it helpful, right? There are some words like that. So if I, I'm not going to hit start conversation. But let me get some feedback or thoughts. But that's how these got up over here. And we can look at a couple of them um, and a little more carefully. But I want to hear, is that, did that clarify how this works? <laughs> Those of you, who this is your first time looking at it. Give me some feedback. Do you need more help with this or thoughts? You good? You good. Can you, Paul, scroll yeah, down yeah, and just, good. can we see some of the questions that students asked it? Yeah. Yeah. Or just read the, a few just to see the kinds of things they asked. Sure. Should we just, uh, and I have, this just happened yesterday, so I haven't like picked out the best ones or anything, right? But um, Roland, is this one okay to read? 
you know? That's okay. I, I like the, the one for uh, Lanaya, I think. Is, uh, Where's that? Oh, maybe. That, that's good, that, that one. Um, Where's Lanaya? I can find it. Or How do you spell her name? This is good, too. Batul's is good. Okay. How do you say his name? Batul. Paul. Batul. Yeah, yes, please, just, yes. Jessica's question was not what the AI returned, but I heard it to be what the students asked. Can we just focus on the level of critical thinking, thinking in the student? In the student yeah, person? that's what I'm curious, like what they wanted AI to do before finding out what AI did. Yeah, it's yeah, good. it's good. There's so, also Rollins telling them what to ask too, so that, that all of that gets mixed together. Go ahead, Roland. You were going to no, I, I did not tell him what to ask. Oh, you didn't? Okay. I didn't. Um, so I said you can ask any questions. It just inspired me because the first example that you did was about the trait. And just mm -hmm. the day before, we did traits. So I was, I, I was encouraged to ask them to maybe ask other traits, and then they jumped into asking other questions. Got it. Um, and so let's start there just to show you. This is the example I put up um, to you know, try to get things going. Um, and I just asked, what do you notice about the characters in this vignette? And then there's a, a thinking partner that is called a trait spotter. And what the trait spotter does is it pulls out each character, even the protagonist, unnamed girl, right? And then gives... Um, an adjective for each, I think, and then and then trait. quotes. Go ahead. Yeah, it gives the, the trait, which is exactly. I mean, nobody would have. Uh, none of them use paternal, for example, as a trait. Um, so I thought that was really a good example. So if you're mm. looking for traits, because um, the next question I will we will be working on is to find three characters. So who can who contributed to the development of this theme, for example. So at least they will have some textual support that they can um, they have already you know put in their notes, or they have an idea of um, what they're gonna use. So are you worried at all that AI is doing too much of the thinking for them? No, because hmm. they still have to, you know contribute the question the question was on it's not there it's asking for the trait but when the you know how these these characters contribute to the theme of abuse for example um mm -hmm. it's, it's not there so they have they still have to think on their own so getting to the students questions here a little bit and i appreciate bob and um jessica for pointing us toward that um this student asked what are esperanza's traits Right. Mm -hmm. And oddly, I got to say, chose the college admissions counselor. <laughs> um, and, and then so the college admissions counselor is answering as if this is a college admissions essay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, I, I, I'm like, <laughs> at once I want to say, oh, I wish we were better. You know, this were a better controlled experiment. And I want to say, well, let's see what happens. You know, so. Any thoughts about that? <laughs> Roland, do, do you, yeah. So do you I, wish I we, you had, we had helped you more with understanding who, you know, what the different things can do or, yeah. Yes, it, you know, it's, th this started it and then I got more, you know, I guess more courage to do more in my next period class. So mm -hmm. um, in the next period class, they, they just ask questions. Okay. And uh, they, you this, know, they, they were fascinated by it. So let, let's look at the next one and, and maybe we can go to the next class, but we can, um, what figurative language is being used? Did the student asked that question? Mm -hmm. Yes. And he came up with that himself or it's a he? Yeah, think. no, yes, that's, she came okay. up with that. Oh, she, okay. And in this one, in that third box, in addition to asking the question, you say something about yourself as well. Um, Roland, would you mind reading this one for us? Which one? This, Jody's. This uh -huh. You mentioned in your notes that you've experienced feelings of insecurity and often downplay your abilities. I can't. 
Okay, hold on. I have to make it bigger. Okay. Abilities, a sentiment that is reflected in the girl's narration in the text. When she describes her shoes as ordinary and her feet as ugly and swell big and heavy like plungers, and also when she considers her uncle to be a liar for calling her pretty, it resonates deeply with your self-depreciating deprecating uh, tendency. The, de mm -hmm. the description of her feelings of inadequacy mirrors your own insecurities and her ability to, uh, to overcome these manufactured shortcomings seems indicative of the potential to, you hold to surpass your own. Moreover, the line where she points out, I forget what, that I'm wearing only ordinary shoes seems to be an invitation for you to see past your insecurities, embrace your strengths, and realize that your worth is not tied to external validation or appearances, but rather it's about how you perceive yourself. This is interesting because we talked about, um, from this, a student mentioned about, you know, how the lying part of it, the lies in, in the book. Mm -hmm. um, and how lies are connected to shame. So um, some t when, we, when I asked them, you know, what, what was interesting about their answers and they, they, they had a conversation to a different level. So they got this response. Some of them even said, wow, why did they have to write a whole essay? You said, right? <laughs> yes. um, but, but you also had conversations around it. Is that yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Because I asked them about, you know, reflections on what their partners were saying or were did they were they happy with the answers? What did they think? And that was, uh, you know, we had a good conversation after that. Shall we look at this? And then let's just hop down to see what she... Uh, oh, this is a different student answering, replying yes. to... Okay. So this student wrote... The question was, how does Esperanza feel about Uncle Nacho? right? Mm -hmm. And there is the answer. And then another student said, this is a great answer, but something feels missing. The AI, the AI did, a great, did great on explaining Esperanza's general feeling about the event and how it compares to your own experience, but it's not very detailed in answering the main question. This doesn't seem to really explore how Esperanza feels about Uncle Nacho, besides saying that He's initially had mixed feelings. The mixed feelings is then further explored about how she feels about dancing rather than how she feels about Uncle Nacho. This is overall a very detailed and great response about Esperanza. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thoughts about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what grade are these students in again? You said freshmen? Yes. I think, I mean, that comment alone is... A lot of a lot of the students that I interact with are, and again, I thought AI is just going to make students cheat, and it's going to make everything so much easier. And that is showing that, yeah, the level of skill and critical thinking that's going into it is they're they're getting an output, but it still requires a lot of a lot of them being able to interact and still make a lot of choices. So that's, that's really cool that they're already doing that. Whether you explicitly told them to do that or not, they're, they're getting that out of it. And then, so that's interesting. Well, I encourage them to respond to a classmate or uh, the AI. And mm -hmm. I honestly have not read all of this. There's just so many. So <laughs> Can oh. I ask really quick before yeah, we move on, where did the where did where did now now comment come from? Did you just find this? Did somebody in here create this? What um, I, I help I help manage it um, at this point. It was okay. created by Dan Durenberg um, in two thousand eight. Um, yeah, and you can put up any text image, and, and it's over. Since March or so, we've been developing these thinking partners on it. So that part of it is is sort of brand new. Okay. That was a really quick answer. But yeah. Uh -huh. but, uh, oh, thank Paul you. promised to put yeah. my students' uh, artwork also for the next book that we're going to have. So it will be interesting. Is there AI for that too? <laughs> for visual? Um, as of last week, OpenAI through chat. Anyway. 
they it, it can now interpret images. However, it it's not available to the. So give me give us six months and it will be able to do that. <laughs> but so far, no, it can't. Um, as well, mm -hmm. say. Just just quickly, somebody chose the level adapter to get. You can you can adapt the language and it gives you a. Summary. Um, but I, I need some help here, some meta help on what to think about think next. About next. Well, I have with you all. With you all. Yeah. So yeah. I have a couple of things that I'm thinking. So one, okay. okay. We only saw glimpses here, so I haven't like I'd have to look more carefully. But I think it's really interesting because this is very, um, like this is helping students with close reading of text, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. doing yeah. that mm -hmm. um, in a pretty sophisticated way. Um, I wonder two things that jumped into my head. One was, um, these are clearly pretty strong readers and house on mango streets, not that difficult. It, it's not that difficult and it's short vignettes, but at the same time, the content is actually way more difficult than it seems. Um, it's, so I, I think it's fascinating for a book like this, where it actually comes across when I taught that book, students were like, oh, this is so easy. It's really short vignettes, but they were missing a ton. So I think using AI here, they're actually mm -hmm. kind of going back in and doing that rereading and reseeing and connecting in a really deep way. At the same time, I'm also thinking one of the most powerful things of this text is how personal it is mm -hmm. and this isn't the limited view I've seen here, allowing that reader response in the same way that's like the Rosenblatt, like what are my connections to these characters? And um, so I'm sort of, I think that's a weakness yeah. maybe. Yeah. And kind of actually, problematic, like if you're, if you're only reading and responding with this without that, you're really missing a huge part of what that text is trying to do mm -hmm. and evoke emotion and a response and draw from students' cultures and languages and lived experiences. And I'm wondering how AI, where's the space for that here? And that is so I'll that's address a I'll, 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 No, but I'll, I'm, no, happy, but I'll, to I'm happy to address it. By, in by, this way, um, I, I went back to, to, to the first one here, the, right, where there isn't any AI, and Roland right. wanted us to keep it turned off. Um, and, and you can, there is a lot of connection and thought that they're doing um, on the text. And then when we get to the third thing, the thing that we're showing here tonight, there's probably way too, it's like opening up something brand new, right? And like, oh, let's see what it can do. So there's that experience, I think. Experience, I think oh, but so I, I think, didn't realize I that there's... there is this that happened. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's Wait. awesome. Go ahead, Rolla. Go ahead, Rolla. We did, um, I tried to introduce slowly, so we annotated the text. Um, and then they had to respond to each other and have a conversation about what they were talking about, a segment that they're focusing on. And they have to classify it into different categories. Um, I'm trying to back. You gave uh, them these categories. Yes. You know, to, to make, they will probably get uh, create a writing assignment that would focus on these categories. And then they have to go back and see what the discussions were so that they can cite their classmates according to, I agree with this person or that person or something like that. I have not, um, we were having our Socratic seminar on Monday and after that we'll do the writing. So... I'm hoping for them to go back to the um, to the responses and use AI to um, to see if they can, you know, put the the thoughts together there for for certain categories that they want to write about. Question, which I I think I think we have a. a, a 
I think it's important to understand the whole context that the Socratic dialogue is happening, that the, there's a writing assignment happening, that they did just annotating um, early on, then they did the figurative language, and then they played with AI, right? So it's it's just a piece of the of the whole picture. Is that is that a fair description, Roland? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I thank you, Paul, for that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I think that's a really cool model for AI and teaching, because if you were only using what we just saw, it would be limited in the way I just mentioned in probably other ways that I don't haven't thought of. But what a gift to have that as a thinking partner and tool to see in a different way as a, a way into the text that they wouldn't have otherwise. One, one, one thing I wonder is the degree to which it is actually a thinking partner. And so I, what, what I'd love to imagine is with the AI generated response, a, a, a prompt back to the student who wrote the original question saying, what questions do you have about this or what response do you have? So can you use AI to generate student thinking, not just, oh, wow, look what AI did. And that sort of, you know, fascination we have with the magic of AI, that's going to wear off pretty fast. But Right now, people are still really, you know, enamored of the miracle. But I think the thinking is actually, well, how do, how do you want to respond to what you've just seen? And so I kind of wonder how you would add that, Paul. So you question, response, and then another field, what, what does this bring up for you? And try to get the thinking visible to the student, student's response. I love that, like the metacognitive piece. Like, what are you getting or noticing out of this? Yeah, because this is really yeah, not a now common. This is not a now common experience. From my, my, this is an in, individual dialogue that people are having with it with the bot. I mean, maybe there's a little reply between peers, and and but it really feels like the energy is what did the bot say, and so build on that. What do I think about what the bot said? Okay, build on that. What does the bot think about what I think, and kind of just lean into the individual relationship with the bot and maybe there's a way to get the social in there, but right now it feels like it's individual to bot. Yeah. I, and I would just, I would just want to respond and look more carefully. There are some of the thinking partners that do exactly what you're asking it to do. Um, it, you know, the last paragraph say, Hey, I've given you an yeah. example here, but yeah. Yeah. So, that some of that exists already, and we could, yeah, you know, do that more. Absolutely. Um, I think we have to remember that this was just yesterday, and we're just diving in and trying to figure out what the hell is going on, right? Um, nope. To some to some degree. Yeah. Um, and, and and so, like, what would it look like in the next book they read, where they have the choice to go to AI or not? or to respond, you know, like when they're making those kind of rhetorical choices and then when they begin to understand what the different thinking partners can do, oh, that one makes me ask good questions. I'm going to use that one, right? So the feminist one, for example, asked three good questions about the text and there's a couple of examples of that in, in Roland's work. But so, yeah. Good points, Bob, but but I do want to say there's there's a lot more going on in here. Some of that, that some of it happens already, and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah. From, but from a teacher yeah. standpoint, I would love to filter out all the AI, get rid of the AI, and just show me what the students wrote, so that I can get because the AI is all that text, and I don't want to read all that AI. I want to. I just want to see what the students were thinking or saying or doing. So how, do, how does a teacher use a tool like this, which is dominated by AI text, when they re that's really not where the learning is? The learning is in what the student's thinking or doing in response to it. How do you hide the AI when you Wrong. really want to understand what's... Yeah. Yeah. So um, the per for me, the purpose is to learn more and... They, they would show, I guess, in their, we have the Socratic seminar, so I want them to be prepared. And if they have any questions or they won't have AI when they answer the questions or, or in the Socratic seminar. So I, I think it's more like I'm 
giving them the space to research yeah. and the vocabulary, you know, the perspectives that uh, are available or for them to think about. And it's fun and, mm -hmm. and it's engaging. And so you can, yeah, I get it. That, so I see the, sem the seminar is really your assessment of mm -hmm. what, what their thinking is. Yeah. yeah. And also, and also the I also think it's such a fascinating way of like, it's one of the things humans are the worst at, especially right now in this context or history that we're this moment, like just listening and getting different perspectives and having practice with that before, like what a great scaffold toward the yeah, seminar, yeah. the Socratic seminar, because that's what you have to be able to do in the yeah, moment. Yeah. And it's it's fun because it's like, you know, you can't always talk to a guru. You can't always talk to Kobe Bryant. So you might as well just practice now and have that conversation. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah. Well, and do you like, I don't know, I'm old, but like the old writing project, <laughs> when I was starting out as a teacher, I used to have, I think I got this in writing project, like, where I'd have my students write from different perspectives, like pretend you're a grandma and write in that voice and pretend it's like such a stilted practice. I don't know. This is a way of like seeing writing from different perspectives in one place and then responding to it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. That's a good point. One, one of the things, one of the principles behind a lot of the work we do on Youth Voices where kids are responding to each other and seeing each other's texts is, is to watch how there's a virtu virtuous cycle of adopting each other's language and thoughts um, as they go. And looking at the AI, I think I, I get looked at this really quickly, but there are quite a few moments where the students are like picking up the AI language and um, you know, the, you know, they'll use the word like pivot, like what? Um, you know, and and so, so I think I think as long as as we have crafted thinking partners that do give them rich language um, to play with, that 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 will happen too. They'll start adopting some of that language themselves. I, I agree. And I think it's happening to my, my kids, you know, because they, they would use certain things and I didn't think of that, you know, why didn't I think of that kind of you know, conversation? This is very, I, I, I appreciate all the questions and the perspectives you all are sharing and all the work you've done wrong. You know, Bob, back to your point, you know, I think I'm listening to this and again, it strikes me as a pacing issue in terms of time, but the idea to explore with the learning partners and sort of have things ping and just be enamored of the of the energy, the instant instantaneousness of it, the feedback. Then to think that there's a Socratic seminar yeah. happening, which is face to face and very much relational and uh, cognitive and all sorts of things. But then if there's time and there's a there's a private metacognitive exercise that the student can do to sort of further synthesize and absorb what they've gone through this is a big stretch i imagine just to have that much time in the course of an activity or a quarter but i could imagine a, a bookend so to speak where ai the ai encounter just in this instance would be twofold an exploratory associative exploration like we're seeing here which has its own energies a Socratic interaction, which deepens the thinking and that makes it sort of social and introduces different taxonomies or perspectives that are sort of held in real time in a kid's head. And then there's a, a reflective exercise where they gather what they've learned and they summarize it and they get into a dialogue with a learning partner that's explicitly designed to tease out the kind of contact you're talking about, Bob, where the act of thinking might be that much more manifest in the, in the, in the transcript. And then that could be an artifact or yeah. It could be a component of the assignment, but it's a scaffolded engagement with the thinking. Um, because I know that I know when I use AI, I'm just like getting something quickly and moving on, right? And that's it's just like life. But if the if the learning moment affords that kind of structure, the tools you've built, Paul, and the perspectives that are in there are available. It's just a question of sort of breaking them out so the pacing can allow me to absorb them. And I know that time and bell schedules are always the 
a really no. scarce resource. But that's how I keep hearing this, is that there's all this really rich layering. It's just a question of how much time can be invested or provided to let them surface. I want to give Rollin more time. Good, yeah. At, I at actually, the end. Yeah. you know, the most I have done this in class is um, 30 minutes. Sure. <laughs> 30 minutes and then they do it at home oh when God. they have time. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's something that they just do on their own. I, yeah. I just don't really do it in class. Mm. So if you you know if you have students like I do, I love my kids. So <laughs> yeah. they're really great. And they're yeah. ninth graders. I can't believe they're ninth graders and they're they're I know they're so the, the, the energy is just uh, amazing in class. Yeah. Yes, want to mention, and we, okay, the, the next step to this tool is for your students, Roland, to make up their own thinking partners, right? To say, what kind, what kind of feedback do you want to have? And, and so that's a whole process of its own. But, but I think that, like, I, I know that that brings in a whole another complication, but I think that'll be really interesting well, once we can get to that at some point. Not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even next week, but we'll get there, I think. Yeah. Any other kind of final thoughts? And, Rowan, you, anything else Just, want to add? Thank you for, yeah. for the feedback and, you know, the the thoughts around this because I, so I didn't, Bob, thanks for that because I, you know, I have to, and I'm, I'm glad we're doing the, I didn't really, really realize that I'm scaffolding to that level. But, yeah, you, you are. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if there was one word you would give to, to, to the experience from, what would the students say that this tool is like for them? It, did you hear hear them say anything, or you can encapsulate their energy? Is it what would be the one word you? I think label? they're they're curious. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. you're curious about what's what's next. What's next? Um, like how can what other questions they can ask to help them understand things better? I, I, that's how I feel uh, because mm -hmm. they they want to ask more questions. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I can't wait till we're, yeah, till we're not making all decisions about what goes next and you know what order to that they're making some of those decisions themselves. But, yeah. That was kind Thank of one of so the things that I was. Okay. Sorry, I was just I was kind of thinking that like wherever you're at with the district, like if you were, they were kind of asking some I guess like basic just question and answers from the AI if they were really looking at like. DOK or Costas or Blooms, whatever, like higher level thinking questions. And that might be something to scaffold towards next. If they're asking like more intense or more specific level questions, then I want, I also wonder if like what the AI would produce, but then I also wonder if, if you're eventually trying to get them to a Socratic seminar would this type of AI be able to help them. Could they ask a question? Like what are some like DOK level three questions that I could ask in a Socratic seminar, they might be able to use, they might be able to use the AI to come up with questions for a seminar or something like that, where they still have to think and they're, mm. they're producing the answer, but they're using AI now to help produce some of the questions. That's a that, thinking partner there. You could make a think a Socratic thinking partner in it as a preparation for going into the session. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. I was just thinking about that. I said, okay, if yeah. you were a guru, well, how would you answer yeah. this question? Or if you were a teenager, how would you answer this question? So yeah. they will have a thinking cap to um, to wear before they can think of an answer. I am um, mm. just looking at jessica t's questions in here and jessica asked how do you think esperanza felt after her encounter with the older male co-worker who pretty much sexually oh, assaulted I love her story. was she scared to go back to work afraid of the possibility of it happening again or how did she feel in your opinion and then she asked the author thinking partner and she asked 
the learner? The same uh, question. The same question. Yeah. So she was like testing. I only see those two tests, but she was testing it out with these different responses and it's a complex question. So it's interesting to see that. Right. And then she, she says what she thinks of the responses. I, I read that's through that, that really fast, but that, that's a, that's a fascinating one to look at. I agree. Yeah. Cool. cool. <laughs> um, we we need some researchers to follow up and help us understand what uh, you did yesterday, Rowan. <laughs> um, but uh, in this room, I, I said at the beginning, I'll say it again. You can come back, back to this room. Um, there are tables set up. Um, you can go back, back in and see the students work that way. Um, if you're a member of the uh, of the AI thinking partner. And if you're not, you can be, there. I can help you get there. Um, but, but all of that work is there for people to see and to, you know, think about, and we'll keep thinking together next week. Um, any further thoughts, ideas? <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thanks. All. Thanks so much. All right, thank, thank you all. Okay. Thanks thank so much. You. Thanks Bye. Roland. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, thanks for presenting. It was awesome. Yep.